All right. Good evening and welcome back to Shop Night Live here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. I missed you all. I, we were just talking earlier how once a week is not frequent enough to uh, have these events. So we will be having another course, but unfortunately it's not going to be for a few weeks. Um, we've got some conflicts. Um, Sorry, the little distraction there. Um, but before I get started, if you enjoy this content, please uh, go ahead and subscribe and like and share and ring the bell. That's the obligatory plea. But no, I, it does help us a lot, and we appreciate when you do. So um, tonight, we're going to continue our, our sawhorse project. And we kind of got jammed up with, for time. Believe it or not, I thought we were going to get through that whole thing last week. Um, I have actually lived in real time. You've seen that little flaw of my, my personality flaw, or whatever you want to call it. I am incapable of judging how long something will take. I have come to that conclusion. It's been 30 years doing this, and some of you have heard me say that, but you, you witnessed it last week. I thought that was a one-nighter, <laughs> but it was not. And uh, it actually is better, because we get to take our time through it. And there's actually a lot there that I'm enjoying showing you on uh, building this sawhorse. It got a little carried away. It, instead of just nailing it together, we decided to throw in a little joinery a little hand cut joinery, um, index dovetails to make it fun, but also to practice some skills without a lot of stress. There's never any stress anyway, but in this case, who cares? It's a sawhorse. You're not selling it. <laughs> Although yours might be in a museum someday. Who knows? Um, <laughs> this is the sawhorse that we'll be working on and completing. Can you see that? Does it help to put it against my shirt? I think that could. Just keeping it still is really the hard I, part. I'm okay. really still, see? Great. You can probably see my heart beating. Um, so you can see how I've got this vertical rail for the, for the horse itself, because there's a lot of ways to build these horses. As I said last week, um, you can put a horizontal top on there that could be five inches wide the whole length, um, like some traditional carpentry saw horses. Um, sometimes the, the um, saw horse rest is vertical like this one. I'm going to use this for a support for my finishing room table, my new finishing room table that I'm excited to have. So I'll have a couple saw, saw horses I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that. You try to say that. <laughs> no, I'll you. listen to you. Okay. You <laughs> Saw horses. And uh, so I'm going to have them. And the nice thing will be that we can break down the finishing room table and actually use the saw horses for other purposes. So I'm excited to have them. And I built them to that height for that particular reason. So you can build yours any height if you are interested in building them. And I should say, I was surprised, um, I guess I'm not in, in AM, that some people were interested in potentially having a drawing of this. I just wanted to do a little poll tonight. If, if there's enough interest that you would be interested in purchasing a drawing of this sawhorse, I'll be glad to make some up. But we'd have to have enough interest to make it worth a while. But, um, It'd be similar to our other drawings. I might get it on one page. So maybe we'd offer it a little less, um, given that it's a shop piece and not a too full-blown piece of furniture. Um, so I can stop holding that up like that. And I want to just hold up one other thing. Um, this is the new project that we'll be doing in, what is going to be five weeks? Did we say August, August 25th? 25th. That's what you said. Yeah, Tuesday evening, August 25th. Now, it gives you some time to plan. I'll be talking some more about this plan, but 
as you can see, we're doing the single bed. It'll be a great guest bedroom bed if you just want a single type mattress in there, or a child's bed. Um, sometimes I built once a baseball bed that was this size, and it was great. I, you know, for my son, I think he was seven or eight, and it was great for a while, but you know, when they start getting uh, into their teens and older, it's, you know, being in the baseball bed didn't cut it. <laughs> so um, now it sits waiting. <laughs> this kind of bed would last a lifetime, you know, in a guest room, or whatever, because as I think you can see, it's, it's going to be a lower post, um, like a pencil post bed. So it's going to have an octagonal shape. And we're going to put this sweet little lamb's tongue detail in there. I haven't totally decided. I might taper the base as well, but we'll, we'll plan on that and decide. That may be an option on the drawing. So I will develop full-size drawings for this bed, and we'll have those ready for when we start the course on August 25th. And we'll be ramping back into courses. It's like the fall, all right? School's going to start again. And we're going to get back on the course schedule because we've been having classes here. And we've got to take a little vacation in August as well. So that's part of the deal. Um, also, what else was I going to say about this? Uh, I'll, I'll remember later. But that's the plan. So I hope you'll be into that. Um, I was going to say something about the pencil post. Oh, yes. Uh, the reason we're doing that bed, some of you may remember when I talked about beds and I, I introduced a low post bed that was turned and some people who can turn on a lathe were interested but there wasn't enough to justify. So I wanted to have a low post bed that didn't require turning but would be a really nice appealing design. So that's the plan and we've got some other great projects right behind that one. All right, let's get into our project. Last time we were here, remember where we left off? We had, these were our uprights on one end station. At the table saw, we cut this bird mouth at that angle. We figured out our angle was 18 degrees, made that cool little cut, and I had the base cut as well. And then we came over here, and put it, do you want to come and look at the drawing again? Okay. We had a drawing on the paper showing exactly how these legs were going to fit in here. And with the legs in position, right on the drawing, we tacked these little indexing strips on there to keep everything aligned well. So this is going to help us to mark out and also assemble later. So this piece is simulating the rail that will be on the top of our sawhorse. So we've got to make this cross piece down here that you can see indicated in the drawing here. Now, um, I didn't fill out the drawing completely because it was, it was more like my personal working drawing. And I knew I wanted to do a through dovetail like this. Now, this dovetail has this shoulder right here. And I cut this last week, right near the end of the evening. We laid it out and made the saw cut and cleaned it up so that everything is square. You see, you need that to be square front to back. So it's very important that that is square in that fashion, in that direction, because when we go to lay out the dovetail, you want it to press evenly in. If that's not square, then the dovetail is either going to get tighter as you press it in or looser. So we'll start off with that. Everything else is pretty square, and we cleaned off that shoulder. And I just went ahead and repeated the same on the other end, so we wouldn't have to redo that tonight. And we can move right into setting it into our base. Now, if you're wondering, what's that gross hole right there? <laughs> well, that, as I explained last week, is a nail hole from our basement stairs. We, this was part of our basement stair treads. 
And as I was starting to work with them, I'm like, oh man, this is really dog wood, but it's not the best. But, you know, it's got sentimental meaning, so it's priceless in that way, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, I don't know. You're going through this work. You could build your sawhorses out of some nicer material that I'm using here, all right? So don't judge me. Um, but anyway, it's, it's any kind of material, especially if you're going to do these dovetails. It'd be kind of fun maybe to make it out of some little higher grade. Poplar would have been even better than this. All right, but I'm happy. I'm, ha I'm not complaining. <laughs> All right, so we want to mark out where this is going to sit before we knife around it or mark around it. And you can almost just press it up and get where it's going to fit. But I decided to set it up by using the drawing and I came up to right about just below my drawing. I've got a line there where it worked out. And I'm going to just take this square over here and make a little mark right there. That's going to be the bottom of the, of the uh, stretcher here. And then I'll make a mark on the other side. And that's going to be the bottom over there. All right. so. Let's go ahead and set it in there. We should be able to slide it up and get these two equivalent here. And if it doesn't match perfectly, I'm just going to put it where it feels comfortable. All right, so that's great. Look how nice and tight these shoulders are under here. And what I love about this style of dovetail is how easy it is to index it. You know, if this is laying on top, sometimes if you add a dovetail on top of a board like this, there's no kind of way to tell when you're in the right location. Here, because of that sh extra shoulder we cut, it makes it super easy. It's perfectly in position right now in my little temporary jig that we put together on the drawing. So I'm going to just go ahead and mark this out. Now, I mentioned last week. A lot of times when I'm at this point with dovetails, if you're doing um, drawers or something like that, once you've cut the tail section, which this is, because it flares almost like the tail of a dove, you would knife around that shape now to cut the inset into the other piece. Um, but I want to show you how accurate you can be on something simple like this. Like, I would normally knife, but it's nice to be able to use a pencil too. Check this out. I got this five millimeter pencil. What? I think most of them know about that beautiful pencil. <laughs> well, there might be some new viewers. I'm not trying to sell these pencils. That's true. Good I just point. like it. This five millimeter is going to make a really nice, clean, small line in here. Excuse me. <laughs> the camera lady is getting her light in my face. Sorry. All right. But it's all about you, and it's all about the picture. So I meant you, viewer, not the camera lady. It, it always, she knows already it's about her. <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Here we are. Keep Sorry. Keep going, man. All right. So <laughs> give me a comment about my five millimeter pencil. All right. So here we are. We're going to just make another mark right there. Look at that beautiful pencil mark. <laughs> All right, come on over here. One more on the bottom. Um, can you see it? Yeah. Your light is in shadow. The light isn't over. Okay, it's good. never mind. Okay, I trust you. All right, so I'm a little higher than my tick mark, but I'm going to follow my line. All right, so check that out. Perfect location. Now I'm just going to square those lines down. I'm going to try to do it without hitting the camera lady's light on my forehead. I'm um, going to just set my pencil, slide up, and I'm just eyeballing. I'm not sure how deep yet. I'll mark that in a second. But, so I'm going to overmark these. And then I'll come inside here. These are just more or less references so that when I saw this socket here, I want to saw it straight. Okay, I'm going to start marking these out quickly here. And this will help me to saw cleanly. 
what I'm getting some. Tom Dean said, good recovery. And Tom says, don't get Chris mad. She'll turn the camera off, and we're all done. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Dean. It takes a lot to get me mad. That's true. Um, I don't think I've ever seen you mad. All right, so. <laughs> all right, now we're going to mark the it's depth. True. So now we've got our dovetail. Now we want that to drop in the thickness of our tail right here. So we want to mark that depth equal to the thickness. So one cool little traditional tool is the marking gauge. It's a simple block of wood with a knife set right in there in this beam that is adjustable. And I already adjusted it, see? So that knife is just the thickness. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. Nice. What the camera work? So it's just the thickness of that tail. So what I'm going to do is now, since these go through, I'm going to take it out of my jig for a second here. I'm going to use the marking gauge on the top and just slide it like that. And look at that nice little cut line. That shows me exactly how deep that is to go. Look at that pencil line. Is that good for a guess or what? Yes, Stuart. We'll put a link to the pencils in the description afterwards. See? Some people like the pencil. <laughs> we should get stock in that company. All right, and uh, then here we go, just right there. And so we do both, all four sides, because these are going all the way through. That's what makes them fun to cut. Now, I could put a little pencil line in these to see them better, because at night it gets harder to see things. But I think I'm going to see it fine. I'm going to just leave it. All right, so now I just have to get rid of this and this, you know. Mark your waist so you don't cut in the wrong spot. That's always a good idea. There we go. All right. <coughs> so remember when I traced around them? When I traced them, this is, sounds like a really obvious point because it is, but when I trace that tail, the pencil line is completely outside the dimension of the tail. I mean, sorry, let me get this. So when this was in position there, I can see that pencil line and I can still see the other one. So it's very close, but it's fully outside the dimension. So. If I want to saw, make a saw cut accurately so I get a really nice fit here, ideally, I would just leave the pencil line and nothing else because there's not really any white between that piece I traced and this pencil line with a, this tight 5 millimeter lead. So I want to try to do that on both sides with the saw. So this is where you don't need to necessarily knife it here. I'm going to use that pencil line almost like a knife line. I can see it nicely. And we'll see how well it comes out. All right. So here we go. We're going to get it into the vise. We've got lots of vices. I've got a lot of vices. Especially now we're set up for the class. We've got six benches in here. Each one has two vices. Plus this one, 14 vices. All right. So I'm going to make this saw cut now. And, you know, you can use a dovetail saw, which I used last time. But the last time I showed you when I was using it, I was primarily cutting this direction. And, sorry, let me do it this way. I was cutting in this direction here. So I was cutting into the end grain. And the saw teeth are configured in such a way that they really give you a nice cut into end grain on a dovetail saw. It's a rip tooth. And this particular one is a 15 point per inch rip. This is a Lee Nielsen dovetail saw. But uh, most of them are comparable in the number of teeth. And a dovetail saw will be a rip tooth. Now I've got this other saw that's a 14 point cross cut and this hasn't gotten a lot of use but we were at a show 
what, two or three years ago, up at Lee Nielsen Open House, and we were, um, we sold a few plans during the day. We were out there demonstrating, and it was a lot of fun. If you're ever up there, it's too bad it got canceled this year, but it's an amazing event if you can get up to Warren. Oh, I forget. It's, I think that's right, though. It's up there in Maine. What a great time, out in the tent and in the building, and all these beautiful tools all around, and great craftsmen all around. It was like a, a shame you couldn't leave your place and go see everybody. But uh, <laughs> we sold a few drawings during the day, and I mentioned, I was talking to some guy, and go, oh, yeah, I want to get that saw. Um, I want to, I don't, I have a slot in my tool cabinet that I left open just like that, like the way you see it. And I said, I want to get that saw um, someday to fill up my cabinet. I don't have a crosscut saw. Well, a certain uh, bird heard me say that, and uh, at some point during the day, she went over and took our, <laughs> our plans money, <laughs> our sales money for the day. <laughs> We're really bad with money, but it was a wonderful gift. No, it, we are. We're not bad with money. We're not bad. <laughs> <laughs> It was a wonderful gift. Now I got the saw. No, we're not. <laughs> but anyway. You deserve it. Yes, thank you. That was very nice. So um, I wasn't even actually dropping that hint. You know how sometimes you really try to drop the hint? I wasn't, and it was such a great surprise. So long story short. Yes. <laughs> it's too late. It was already long. I'm going to use this crosscut saw to cut out the waste, and because I'm cutting across the fibers, it's ideal. It's a little rougher to get started than the, uh, the uh, dovetail for some reason, but, and it has a little more set on the saw, like a little more flare to the teeth, but it saws so beautifully, and I'm going to show you now. All right, so I'm going to get in here, and you're not going to see this first one because the line is on my right. But I'm sighting it as I pull back. I want to just see that pencil line. And I am really close to it, but here we go. Now I'm very light. Like I'm playing a very subtle note on the violin. You all know what that feels like, right? I wish I could play the violin. But it takes work, you know. <laughs> I guess I haven't put that work in. All right, so now I've got it established. I'm just going to go for it straight down. And I'm going to see my, my knife line. All right, so I just barely. This side you're going to see a little better. So we're going to come in here, and I just want to saw on the waist side of this pencil line. I'm trying to hold my hand so I don't block you. Okay, see I'm just leaving the pencil line. Can you back up just a little bit? I can use your light. Thank you. <laughs> see that? Look at that. Just the pencil line. And now we're going to saw straight down. Right to the knife line. Now, I'm going to just knock this out with a chisel, so if I make some relief cuts here, I'll make it faster to get rid of it. Look, this is a great time to practice your sawing technique, too, because you don't care. You want to use the full blade of the saw. Look at this. You know, I was, I was doing that this afternoon. And I got so carried away, so impressed with myself. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> then I saw it right beyond the line. I was like, it's such a great speedy feeling there. Now, before I take it out, I'm going to rough this out and get rid of a lot of the waste. So I'm going to come in with a chisel and just pop some of those blocks. But I'm going to come up from that line a good 16th to an eighth. Just make an initial cut on the outside here. This is where, if it happened to break too deeply, this would be exposed. So I want to make that one first. 
that cut first. Now I'm going to come to the inside and come up from my knife line a little bit. And just get this. Okay, now I can pop them out. Here we go. So this is a quick way to just get rid of the waste. And I'm going to save the rest of it for doing flat on the bench. So let's go. Let's get the other one. I'm going to just go a little faster this time to show you more real speed. Again, I'm going to be on the waist side of the line right here. And just draw it back. Right down there. Just think it's like Itzhak Perlman right there. Huh? Here we go. A few relief cuts. Use that blade. This is beautifully sharp, too. What fun. See, you could pull out the router and, you know, set up some jig here. By the time you did that, you'd be done with hand tools. And look at the experience you're having. It's wonderful. The sound of it, plus the the directness, how you're really related to the wood, you're, it's, you're doing it more directly. I'm not against power tools, as you know, but it's nice to have this hand tool experience whenever you can. I try to do it as much as possible. So let's just go ahead and uh, clean these up. And I'll show you how quickly that happens. Let's get our um, hold fast. This is my little uh, Gramercy hold fast. I, didn't, I haven't uh, looked these up on the web. Have we ever yep, listed? we have them. Okay. We can put, we'll put links to all these things. Okay, great. Um, so now I've got my knife line from the marking gauge. That's another beautiful thing about it. It not only tells you where the depth is of that piece, but it gives you a beautiful seat for the chisel to cut a perfect location. So I'm just going to take a little of the off, off first, and I'm going to come in from both sides. So I'm going to go about halfway here, and I'll start over here. If the grain is running out like that or in an angle, you want to start at the low point, because if it actually, if the grain runs and tears, you don't want it to tear below the line, so I'd start at the low point. So if it does run, it's not going to cut below my line. Guess how I know that? Guess how I know to tell you that? Because, yes, I've, I've screwed that up. I've realized it the hard way. <laughs> Whenever you think, wow, that's a great point, just realize that I probably made that mistake. It's not like I'm some. <laughs> I'm not some genius. <laughs> All right, so the grain does seem to be running on this side, so I'm gonna actually start over here on the right, and then go to the left. This is so. This wood is so soft that it's kind of fun to work with as well. You know, when you when you're making furniture all the time, you tend to work with you know, wood that's a bit harder, and so when you get to use pine like this, it's really a pleasure. It's quick and easy. Look at how that socket is just about clean. So I just want to pair across and make sure that it's not too low at any point. I can sight right across there. I can also pick up a square. And see how it looks. That looks pretty good, huh? I'm reasonably content with that. I'm just going to 
get this a little bit here. So look, that was a quick little cut. Now let's see how that fits. <coughs> this was the one. So we get it in position. This was to the pencil line. Look at that, huh? That's sweet. Huh? That, you put a little glue in there, it's going to be so nice. Actually, there's no wiggle in it at all. But that just shows you how accurate you can be just cutting right to a pencil line. And it's quick and easy. So, yes, it's overkill for a sawhorse for your shop. But it's good practice. And every time you look down at that, you're going to get a warm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this other one out because I want to glue this up. So we have to really do this, all right? This is not just for show. Um, but you see how quickly it goes. I think we can do it. I hope it doesn't run into another knife. <laughs> I'm going to get right in that knife line. And there we go. So, again, let's flip. And back at it. Let's see where it's running. It's running up that way. So I'll go from left to right in this one. Right in the knife line. Wow, look at that camera work. Okay, let's see how we're set. Now we just have to clean this out again. I mean, ideally you make the perfect saw cut each time, but you don't have to come in and fuss with it much. But if you go off of square here, you can always pair it to your line a little bit, which I just lightly adjust there. This one looks pretty good. I'll give it a test in a minute here. Make sure it's going to work. <coughs> and I want to make sure that, again, that this is down enough in the middle section here. It has to be to the correct plane of the outside. And that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfection and smoothness in there because your strength really comes from these sidewalls too. But there we go. That looks great. All right, let's see how that one fits. Take it over. It's like butter. Look at it. Look at it. This is so forgiving. It's really a pleasure. I'm glad I didn't screw that up on live camera. <laughs> but I've made a few of these. All right, so look at that. You've got our two half index. Super easy. It should be in the right spot. Now, before we can glue this in, we have one other thing to do. We can't glue it in because we're going to have a stretcher, if you remember from last time, that runs down the middle, and it has a full dovetail let in here. Just one. So let's go ahead and cut that. We just have to cut one. And I'm going to show you, this is the piece. So when we were cutting on the table saw last week to cut and set up our index, our shoulder, we all, I also ran these straight pieces. I can't remember if I showed you this, but I did the same offset. So it's the exact same offset because it's going to go fully the thickness through. It wants, we want this dovetail to be in that position like that. And we want it to lay over the top. And it's going to connect each leg section. So it'll connect to the other end. So let's go ahead and mark this. I just did that light scribble mark as a guide. And while I was at the table saw, I also made these little edge cuts. So that'll make it easier 
to cut around. We don't have these shoulder cuts to make up around the side. So let's get our, I've got the uh, bevel gauge here. This is set to about a 1-5 angle. I'm going to come in about an eighth of an inch from this. No hard and fast rule. And I'll do the same over here. Come in about an eighth. There we go. And I also found the center of this, and I already marked the center line, which will make sense in a little while, because we have a center line on this one as well. I made a little tick mark to find the center between our stretcher here. And I'm going to just go ahead and mark that center line now while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so we're going to want this to be let in, and we're going to align that center line just like that. But first, we're going to cut those tails, and to do that, we want to get it into the, the vise. And I need to square these lines across. That's a big factor. You know, when I went to press fit these in, if that was at an angle, it would have been really sloppy loose, or I would have struggled to fit it in. So having them square makes all the difference. So I'm going to just mark this square across and this one as well. All right. Now. I don't know if we saw what you just did because our. What? I was kind of far back and your hands were in the way. Oh, Maybe sorry. You show that better. All right. So all I did, here's the actual line we're going to use for the flare of our dovetail which is about a 1-5 angle. Let me double check that. Here's my 1-5 slope. Yeah, there it is, it's slightly more. So once I marked that, now I had to square that across. And that's all I did there that you missed. I just used this little square to square that across. Now I'm going to remove this material. And I'm going to get these scribbles out of the way. This was just to give you a sense of what we were doing. So we're going to get rid of this and this. OK, now I just have to saw that waste away. Now this isn't super critical to be perfect to the line, because whatever I cut here, I'm going to trace into the other piece. Oh, I got to blow my nose for a second. I got to blow my nose. Oh, sorry. Wow, I last to the about the 40 minute mark, 35 minute mark. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm going to make this cut. I'm going to grab the dovetail saw this time. We're making a nice end grain cut here. I got to move a little. And I'm going to use the line. Now the important thing here is to saw true right across. So I'm going to start on the corner. And now I'm going to let it, as I'm sawing, I'm going to just drop that front edge and watch it track true right across. That's the key right there. Okay, now I can just go. I just let the saw run. It, it cut a little bit harder angle, but I don't care because I'm going to just trace that. Do the same thing on this side. I gotta move to my left a little. You're not gonna be able to see this one as well because I'm on the other side, but. Okay, let that go. Now I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get the little Japanese saw. It's great for flush cutting and just make that final. Let's get that on the other side as well. This is just going to flush cut to the shoulder. Okay, now while it's in position, go ahead and clean off that inside corner. So everything's nice and clean. Now the shoulder is all in plane. And I want to check, how did I, I 
I want to make sure this is square across, and that looks pretty sweet. That's acceptable. I'm going to just lightly pare a little bit. It's slightly out, but hardly anything. Now the other side, I want to do the same. Clean it right into the base. Okay. Let's see if we're square on this guy. That looks nice. I'm going to take that too. So that's the key right there. You see, you can still see the slight pencil line right across the top of that. Can you see that in the camera? Mm -hmm. So that's so important. And then you just let the, the saw run straight down as you make that cut. So there we go. We've got our sides. Hmm. Tiny little bow in that cut. I'm going to just pair it. I'm not sure why. Just pairing this a little straighter. That looks good. Had a very slight bow to it. All right, so now I want to transfer that shape onto the top of our piece, just like we said. And to do that, I'm going to get it in the vise right here. Tom, um, were you pushing the saw or using the weight of the saw on the work? Um, Stuart's asking. St yeah, Stuart, I was not pushing really hard. I that saw is sharp, and I was using the whole thing. So I'm not pushing down a lot. I was just using the length of it. So it's soft wood, so it dropped through really, really easily. But uh, I'm going to use this, and just need, need something just to hold this so I can get it in the right. I'm going to get it up in position here, clamp it in the vise so it's up high enough. And I'm just going to turn this piece out here. That's the way I can get it up off the bench, which I need. And now, with that lined up in the center, and my other end is going to be in the center. That's the one I just caught, right? Yeah. Wait a second. Let me double check. No, it's not. Sorry, let me, I'll be right there. B, okay. Okay, this is the A end. We could look at the tape, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, see, I already cut the other end, and that's mark B. This is the A end, so. Um, yeah, that's the one I just did. All right, so I'm going to get that centered, run on the pencil line, and now I'm ready to mark it again. Again, I'm going to just use the pencil right here. And now I can square it down. There's something really satisfying about cutting these, these through dovetails that are indexed like this. They're quick. And as you see, they, they're pretty forgiving. They go together pretty easily. We had a class here, what was that, two weeks ago, on uh, building the shaker end table with a drawer. And that's, they're half-blind dovetails, and it's just more demanding and less forgiving, it feels like. So this is a great exercise for starting out with dovetails. Um, so here we're going to let this in. Again, we need the depth. We've got the same depth as we had on the other. So we're going to use our marking gauge again. Show us our depth. And here, I don't even care if I go on beyond it because it's kind of cool to see the marks of the maker. If you look closely at this thing some, someday, I'm going to try to get this nice and perpendicular. So my saw cuts might be a little more accurate. And now I'm going to make my cuts again. So just leaving that pencil line just like the last time. Which, which Lee Nielsen saw is this one? 
This is the crosscut. It's a 14 points per inch, 14 PPI crosscut saw. And I don't know what else I would say about describing it. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how they describe it. All right, so now I'm going to. Again, we'll put links, Stuart, to all of this. Won't take me very long afterwards. That light is kind of in your way. No, it's just the way you had it. It was just the light. <laughs> all right. Okay. Now I'm going to hit this one. Trying to just saw nice and true and perpendicular to make this fit. You know, one time. If you can fit it in a one time, it really speeds up your work. Okay. All right, here. Now I'm going to think about this. It was Stuart who asked that, right? How this, see, I'm not pushing down. In fact, my grip is very light. Um, it's sailing right across. It's it's the num it's the number of teeth that are hitting it and the softness of the wood. The fact that it's sharp. Helps a lot. This is good practice for sure. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to clean that out. So I'll start out here again. Make a few little primary cuts here. Get rid of these chunks. Chuck says the expectations. Oh, he didn't say this. I'm sure someone else wrote this. Maybe. Well, maybe he did. The expectations of life depend upon diligence. The mechanic that would perfect his work must sharpen his tools. Oh, oh. <laughs> that sounds like. Thank you, Chuck. That's profound. We need that. We need that higher brow perspective. There are a lot of great quotes that relate to, you know, work, workmanship, and life. You know, I think a lot. Like when I'm in the morning is a great time to sharpen your tools if you know you're going to be doing a lot of handwork. And there's something really sweet about that time and you're, you're touching up your chisels on the stones and you're just listening to the stone cut and you're seeing a really sharp edge get there. And it's the same, you know, mentally, spiritually, as you prepare for the day. You know, not to just rush into the day, but think about you know, the quality of work you want to do, the kind of spirit you want to have in the day. You know, the, you know what I'm saying, the people you might meet. So that preparation time of sharpening your, st your tools is such a great life analogy as well. Chinese philosopher, he says, 551, 479 BC. Okay, I'm going to. Bert says it's called a carcass saw. All right, Bert. You're the man. All right, I'm going to hold this again perpendicular and just go halfway. Same thing as before. We've got a little wider socket here. We've got a single tail for our stretcher. All right, we'll flip it around. Whoops, lost my little block. And let's see where we start. I guess we'll start here. You almost don't have to hit it with the mallet, but you go and... You Tom's asking if you sharpen your own saws. Uh, 
no, Tom, I I don't usually, but I am probably going to get into it the next time. I just, if I'm in a hurry, but no, I haven't. I know there's some people who like to do that themselves, but as little as my Lee Nielsen, like the dovetail saws, don't need to get hit that frequently, I mean, with tuned up, but I've got a, a nice saw holder over there that will is made for sharpening saws. See this right here? This is an old one. So I'm ready, <laughs> but I, I got to get the right files. Do you tend to sharpen in the morning or after I the saw day? my veneer saws, but um, um, if I know I'm heading into a day of it, I will do it in the morning. Um, otherwise, you know, if something comes up during the day, I'll, I'll do it as needed. Like I start, you know, I try not to leave the tools really dull. So when you pull them out of the cabinet, you usually anticipate they're ready. But if I start to feel a dull edge, I'll just stop right then. What's that other quote? One of the many attributed to Lincoln that I'm not sure, people aren't sure it really said, where it's like, it said uh, if he was given three hours to cut down a tree, he'd spend the first two sharpening the axe. <laughs> but what a difference. I mean, you can see I'm not fighting with this, and it does quicker work if you have sharp tools and things go more accurately as well. So I want to just check that, how I am across here. I'm seeing that I'm, I'm on hitting the line on both sides. So now we're ready to check it again. Let's make sure this is the A, which I just did. Hopefully this one will go in. There it is. It went in. Nice. So now we are ready to assemble. Wow, that was nice. I didn't even have to tap it. All right, I'm going to set this aside. That's because I did a few of them earlier today. I got all the bugs out. It's definitely an acquired feeling, you know, cutting dovetails. But there's no, what I'm, what I was saying all along about what I'm thinking about is, is the mindset that makes it happen. And the rest is just getting the feeling, the muscle memory of um, the saw and the chisels and all of that. And You'll be cutting nice ones in no time, if you've never done it before. OK, so I'm going to clean this off. We're going to use our drawing and our jig, which turned into a jig, our, our assembly jig, as to put this thing together. So here we go. Get this in position again. One down here. Now this is the simulation of the top rail. And that fits awesome. And here's my piece, which everything should go just as planned. I think we're ready to glue it in. So let's go ahead and get some glue. All right. I'm going to use some Type Bond 3 usual. You can use you could use yellow for this as well or even white glue. And I'm just going to get it nicely in on the sides of the socket here. Get a little on the face and also on these guys here. Steve's asking, don't the don't the saws stay sharp for some time if done right and handled carefully? Yes, Steve. That's why I don't sharpening that often. And, um, oh, I didn't finish my point. Um, I have sent mine to Lee Nielsen, too, like for 15 bucks. They'll do it. So, you know, it's, it's nice to do it yourself, but I just, I've only, I think I've sent it to them a couple times. So, it doesn't need it that much. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get this right nicely in here. And I'll 
get a little brushed out here on the tail itself. And that's it. We're ready to assemble. So the, the neat thing about dovetails too is even if, if you have a little bit of an opening, when you glue them up like this, you get a little swell factor and it's forgiving. And it makes them really look like they came together. There we go. Get that glue off. You can almost wash the pencil lines off here too. Some dripping down. Thank you. All right. It's probably a little on the inside too, but that's pretty sweet. And you know it's in perfect position because everything is exactly where we had it on the drawing. So it's kind of cool to, I don't often set up a jig out of my drawing, but in this case it really worked out well. Now I want to make sure that those are really seated well. So I'm going to just grab a clamp. And I don't really need to leave the clamp on there I, because there's no, once you get it pulled in, so watch right in here, you're going to see a little glue squeeze. See, I'm getting that. So that tells me it's fully seated. Look how nice that. That ended up being a nice fit. They don't always come out. as nicely as that but now the other side will do the same thing I'm just gonna pull this in for a minute here so we just got a little squeeze there and we wipe it off there we go. all right so I'm gonna take these off now that's enough there's no real interest in that popping out and I'm gonna set it back in my jig so it I can says, get the only guy I know makes a two by four look good. <laughs> <laughs> two by four. <laughs> so now we've got our top rail here is in position, and let me turn it this way. Tom, how does that work? Does Lee Nielsen pay the shipping back, or how do they? Do you remember? I'm asking that. It wasn't a question. I forget. I think you have to ship it yourself, and I can't remember what the deal was. It's been a little while since I've done it. But uh, they will sharpen them. All right, so here I'm going to put a little gusset up here on the outside, and this will just be glued on. This is going to reference index for the bottom, and it also gives you a lot of strength across the top because I may want to replace this rail. So this rail is going to get screwed in, but this gusset will sit right at the bottom of that bird's mouth there as well. So get that right there. Put this little clamp on there for a second. Yeah, I don't really need that. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I've already got the angle on that side. So I'm just gonna mark it with a pencil over here. And I'll hit it with the bandsaw. Cut it off. Okay. We'll get a little glue on here. This stuff really sucks up the glue, so I want to make sure I get enough on there. I'll put a little on the piece as well. Let's Carlos see. said he's noticing that you're moving the bench back and forth. Does it move when you're planing? or? No, it doesn't move. I'm moving it just so you can have a better camera angle. No, it's plenty heavy. If you have a heavy enough bench, it won't move when you're planing. Um, Unless you have the blade sticking out about a quarter of an inch. <laughs> uh, so there we go. I've got that in place. And plenty of glue. Now I want to just tack that down 
so the glue will hold. I don't really need to nail it, but I'm going to put pin nails in there to hold this. Touch it. <laughs> don't do it in your finger. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Kimberly, you thought I might do my finger. No, I didn't think you would. <laughs> will Lee Nielsen sharpen non-Lee Nielsen? I'm not size? sure. You'll have to ask them. I don't know. Maybe not, because they... I think it's kind of like... Service. Yeah. And Richard says no. Okay. All right, so those nails, they're not really... They're hardly anything. They're just 23 gauge. But those are almost like clamps, just to hold it till the glue sets. But they also hold it in perfect position so I can slip out this rail. And my rail will fit in just right even with the bird's mouth. So there you have it. There's one of the ends. We do all the ends like that. Now I'm going to clear this out of the way. We can bring the whole thing together now. Here we go. So exciting. You're excited? Sawhorse. <laughs> I'm going to set this over here. Let's bring it up onto the bench. Now, ideally, I'd let this set a little longer before handling it, but I'm not going to be too rough with it. And I've got the other end right here, the B end. And here's my stretcher that goes down the middle. That's the B end right there. Make sure that fits. Yeah, that feels good. So now we're ready to put some glue in there. Get a little glue, get this whole thing together. So isn't this a lot more elegant than for a woodworker? It seems appropriate. Yes, we'll get the pin nailer in there too, Dean. For a sawhorse to have been sawn personally by the maker. I think it's just great dovetail practice. That's kind of fun. Part You're right. It, yeah. You're right. That's an inside joke. Okay, I get all that glue on there. Now I need my brush just to help me smear it a little more smoothly. Welcome, David. We're glad you got dumped here. <laughs> Somebody got dumped here? He's watching something else and got dumped here. Oh, man, you have... Welcome. This is uh, the... You got here just in time. This is the big moment. We're assembling this thing. It's our second week, well, second evening or hour. Uh, we're going to put this thing together. And look, we get all that glue nicely on there, just like the last time. And I'm going to get it lined up. There's my A, B. That's important. Whoa. <laughs> Set that right up there. And start it in, and then I'll get the other side in position. Let's start that one in. And let's get that mallet. Be casual, because you're not sweating it. <laughs> oh, that's going in good. Want to get right in here? Sorry, oh, yeah. Advice. Now we can wipe that down. Take that see how down. that fits. Get everything lines up nicely. And it pulls it right up with the shoulder because the dovetail is a mechanical joint. It's actually because of the shape. It's like a giant wedge and it's holding this thing tight together. The wedge is pulling these shoulders in tight and the offset that we have is actually creating some rigidity against racking. Oh, look, I got a little drop of glue. <laughs> Fell from above from my gusset. Okay, there we go. The same down the other end. Now I'm just going to stick a couple clamps on here quickly to pull these down. So I'll get that on there. You'll be able to see that down there in a second. 
is just going to, same thing as I did a minute ago, just pulling it just to make sure it's fully seated. So right in, right in here, you'll see that same kind of squeeze out, at least you should. such exciting programming here. <laughs> Look at that. It's, you know, it's bad when you're excited to see the glue pull out of the joint. <laughs> How many times I've done this alone and I don't have anyone to share with. This is so much more fun to let you in on this excitement. John says you should recess. John says you should recess those <laughs> gussets into the legs. Yeah, I thought about that, John, but I didn't really want to get too crazy. <laughs> I know, that's I the mean, one thing about it. you know. <laughs> it's the one thing about it, but I am going to overextend with the, the rail. And I think it looks fine at the end. But you're right. Uh, to be a purist, it's the one thing. <laughs> you know, I thought you could put another little cross piece here. But I wanted to get it all the way up to support, so it really... It's just a thin piece of half-inch Baltic ply, which is really great for the job. Um, so there we've got that, and now we need our rail. And to do the rail, I want to make sure that I'm not flaring when I set this or coming in this way. Um, well, first of all, I've got to just quickly hit these. I've got most of the screw holes done but this I just use a countersink I located these I'm gonna put in some inch and a quarter coarse thread like uh, drywall screws I'm not doing this perfectly because it is a shop it's funny how selective you're being on some things and then other well, ones, it's all out. This is countersunk, so these will pull in nicely. Okay, now, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to show uh, what you just did there. Now i got to drill the actual hole. You want to <laughs> move on every side of them. It's just so on. exciting. Now, this is just a sacrificial piece, so... I got a cross in front. <laughs> oh, I can smell the pine. So that's all I do to pre-drill all my holes. The rest of them are all set. So now we can set our... <laughs> Michael says put a wide top board on that and we have a pizza table. <laughs> I always, Michael's our pizza. He always brings it around. I love it. I love it. <laughs> He always comes back to the pizza. <laughs> you're going to have to have some of that pizza. Get you here for a class so you can have some. All right, so it's a four inch overhang um, I'm, I, all together. So I'm going to be two from each end. So all I have to do is mark that here. I'm just going to come in two. Let's see, what do I want the top to be? Yeah, that looks good. Come in two. Make a little mark right here, and then come in two on the other end. Same thing. Okay, so let's set our rail in. Oh, perfect. I see the pencil mark. Perfect. That means everything must be fairly square. <laughs> like the way those dovetails are holding it in is true vertical. So it's pretty rigid, and I haven't even run the screws in. And to do that, I'm just going to use this little screw gun and these little inch and a quarter drywall screws. Well, coarse thread. They're wood screws, technically. And they go right in very fast. Holding the rail down. Yeah. 
if you wanted to really commit to this, you could glue this in. But you know how sometimes you saw through and the rail tends to get trashed? This will be removable. The base is so solid and glued together that it's going to allow this will have to be the right thickness, though, because I did take those regular, you know, one by tens, uh, two by tens, and I dressed them down to, I think, inch and three eighths or something like that. We almost got it. Is there, um, Stephen's asking, is there a reason you didn't mount the gussets on the inside edge of each leg assembly? On the inside edge? Mm -hmm. um, it's just a choice. I have all the structure on the outside here. So, yeah, you could go either way. But I like the way it looks like, you know, resting there. Yeah, you could have, I could have hidden them in the inside as well. But that's a personal <laughs> choice. Those gussets. Those gussets are... Yeah, I know. We did all this beautiful work, and that's the one thing, right? You're like, uh, gusset. It's 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 kind of doesn't look like it belongs. Maybe we need to change this design, right? But it's it's a saw horse. But man, is that thing rock solid? So let's put it on the floor. Look at that. Wow, that is so rock solid. I mean, I could even sit on this. That's 200, well, I don't want to give away my weight, <laughs> 200 something, about 210 these days. All right, look, I have my other one already made. I want to bring that in. So that little overhang helps them to be a little further under. And I'll just show you how I'm anticipating this to be in the finishing room. They'll be maybe a little further, maybe like that, and I'll have it index. The top's going to be wider than this. It's going to cover the sawhorses completely, like this way. And so I could throw up there, you know, a larger plank, and I'll have it with a couple blocks here that I can attach to give it more rigidity. But it's super solid now, not rocking at all. And then on top of this, I'll be able to throw on there, every now and then I'll have this disc like attached to a board like this and then that in certain applications it's nice to be able to put something like this on your finishing table and it gives you a carousel so like let's say I was finishing this chair which we're going to be making next week you could put it on here and see how it's at the right height now to work I'm not really bending over I'd have my spray gun, and like this is where it's perfect, shellac. I'd get my color on, and then I'd start spraying, and you're just moving it around. You, no more walking around. I'm so excited. I'd be spraying here. You get all up in there, and you're done. I wish I had the spray gun to show you, but what a culmination of a lot of fun project. This, just to make these sawhorses, there's a lot of honest joinery in there, and it's a great exercise to build something that's going to be stable and used in your shop for years, maybe generations to come, <laughs> if you use a little better word than I did. Although, that'll hang in there for a good long time, I'm pretty sure. It's being suggested the, that you veneer the gussets. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we have more gusset talk. I didn't know we were going to get into the gussets, but that is, that is true. I probably should have. But look, it does have a more traditional sawhorse look. But isn't that awesome? We get these two beautiful sawhorses with, here's the joinery we just made tonight. It's got that really nice index through dovetails on the corner. This is where you start playing the music and you like pan across it. <laughs> All right, let's start whistling and show the finished product. All right, hey, if you enjoy this content, 
Who would not subscribe? Would it, it's just going to go up from here. Mm -hmm. And then also like and share and uh, ring the bell so that you get notified when we have new content up. Uh, we're looking forward to having a chair making class in here next week. So we'll see you next Thursday night as well for some Yeah, we still topic. have a couple more classes this season, wood turning and another veneering class in September. Yes. So check those out. Wood yeah, we got some room in the wood August. turning class and there's still some space four if weeks. you want to come. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I guess we covered it, right? Nope, we're good. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out for this, the second night of our Sawhorse installment. And I hope you enjoyed that. And maybe you'll try your hand at this. And we'll see about whether or not we'll be making plans for this. But thanks for being a part of this and hanging out in the shop with us a little tonight. And I look forward to seeing you next week right here at the same time on Shop Night Live. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, friends. Great to be with you.